tonight. We have a sneak peek tonight of Lions for Lambs, some theater reviews with Chris, and some Tegan and Sarah coming up on Sneak Peek. Entertainment, Entertainment the, the way, way you, you want, want it. it. Hi, welcome to Sneak Peek. I'm Daniel Stoll. And I'm Christine Ramone. Today, I heard some more crazy news about Tom Cruise and his tactics. <laughs> what, did he get kicked out of a furniture store? <laughs> no, he dragged his wife Katie home to the event of his new movie after she ran 26 miles. Well, I'm not sure who was more crazy, uh, Kate for running 26 miles or Tom for dragging her there. I don't know, but this point is, tired or not, they went to the premiere of Lions for Lambs and Sarah has a sneak peek for us. Over to you. Line for Lambs debuts tomorrow along with one of its cast members, Andrew Garfield. Making his first international film appearance, this stellar beginning for Andrew, whose cast members include Robert Redford, Meryl Streep, and Tom Cruise. The film is centered around two young men fighting the war in the Middle East and the many people interwoven by the conflict. Andrew plays a rich, callous student who ignores the advice of his teacher, played by Redford, to lead a meaningful life like his peers in Afghanistan. Andrew's acting career has an impressive history that developed across the pond in London. He trained at the Central School of Speech and Drama, where he graduated in 2004. Andrew held steady roles in British dramas and comedy series, as well as theaters. He nabbed the lead of the British film Boy A, where a young man was released out of prison after spending most of his life behind bars. In 2006, he was awarded the Milton Shulman Award for Outstanding Newcomer and the Jack Tinker Award for Most Promising Newcomer. For his next project, Andrew has be begun the pre-production of the modern-day fantasy film Imaginaria of the Dr. Parnassus, starring Heath Ledger. Along with a background of accolades and experience, the international screen awaits Andrew's promising career. Meryl Streep has been making so many good movies lately. I especially love The Devil Wears Prada. She was so cool in that movie. I loved her in Queen. Do you even know who Meryl Streep is? Yeah, she was in Lions for Lambs. You only know that because we just saw it. No, it's because I know good female talent when I see it. And right now, we're going to go to some wonderful female talent, Melanie, who has this week's Equin E! News Melanie. Welcome to this week's E! News Update. I'm Melanie Torrey. Shia LaBeouf, recent star of Disturbia and Transformers, was arrested outside of a Walgreens in Chicago this last Sunday. The intoxicated star was taken into the custody of the Chicago Police Department. It has been reported that LaBeouf was very polite during the arrest and is trying to avoid the pitfall of snagging many of his fellow young stars. On Sunday afternoon, Katie Holmes participated in the New York City Marathon. The race is 26.2 miles long, and she finished it in 5 hours, 29 minutes, and 58 seconds. She placed 34,195th. Way to go, Katie. On Monday, screenwriters and members of the Writers Guild of America formed picket lines outside of studios in Los Angeles and New York declaring a strike. The screenwriters of many shows, ranging from Lost to The Young and the Restless, refused to return to work until they received fair compensation for the new media airing over the internet. The rules of the Screen Actors Guild require actors to continue working in the event of a strike. However, actors such as Steve Carell from The Office and Amy Poehler of Saturday Night Live have joined the picketers. Jay Leno, who was seen providing Krispy Kremes for some of the protesters, is quoted as saying, I've been working with these people for 20 years. Without them, I'm not funny. I'm a dead man. In the event that the conflict is not resolved, we can expect to be watching some of our favorite reruns for the time being. In other news, what child star is bringing his bad self to Broadway and in the nude? Yep, you guessed it, Daniel Radcliffe, formerly known for his role as Harry in the Harry Potter films, will be bringing his film Equus to Broadway in the United States next September. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the play, it's about a teenage boy who blinds six horses and then a psychiatrist tries to decipher his motives behind such cruel intentions. It is projected that fans will turn up in the masses to see this gem of British theater, while others are just simply interested in getting a peek at Potter's that's all for this week's E! News Update. I'm Melanie Torrey. Back to our hosts. My goodness, I guess we finally get to see what Harry's wand really looks like. I don't get it. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. Wand. That's mm, funny. So, how's life? 
You know, same old, same old. Been any good concerts? A couple got to see Regina Spector when she came through town. That girl gets my soul. She is so deep. I'm thinking I'm going to write her some poetry when I get home tonight. That's not creepy at all. But speaking of more talented female musicians, Ben saw T uh, Tegan and Sarah last night at Stubbs. Let's check out that interview. Ben? And I'm Tegan. We make up Tegan and Sarah. The rest of them can't be here. No. The tour is going really well. Um, this is like leg two of the tour, and um, the American leg. The other leg was Canadian. Mm -hmm. It's like a nicer leg. It's like it, it's more like a sports shoe, and this is more like a this is more like a, an army boot. Uh. Yeah, but it's good. It's like a good tour. It's been going really well. The shows have been going really well. When, when we first started making albums, we were really, um, well, consistently we were relying on other people to like who understood how to record, and you know we we were just playing guitar. So at the time we weren't like I, I never thought about adding keyboards or any of these things. Like it was very much like how do we record what we do, like in our bedroom. So from each record, uh, I think that you see more growth and you see like our, the, maybe the full vision of what Tegan and I really want to do, and you just get more confident, like. I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I was 19. Now I'm like, you know, I sort of have more of an understanding about how the studio works and how the record cycles work and, and sonically how to capture what we want on record. Apparently, if we can make it, we'll do it. Even if we've got like one leg and, you know, pus coming out of our faces, we'll make it happen. We'll just make the audience sing instead. So we'll make it happen. Well, we really, really appreciate that. So. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Tonight we'll be fine, though. Tonight we will not be doing that. We're in, we're in full form. So, Danielle, you're kind of looking a little down. Yeah, well, my dog died. Oh, I'm so sorry. When? Uh, about two years ago. It's kind of been a while. Is that the only thing bringing you down? Yeah, pretty much that's it. <laughs> well, let's see if Will can cheer you up with this week's trivia. What's up, guys? It's that time again of that show that you know and love. Trivia time. In the 1998 sports film The Water Boy, how many times did Rob Snyder say a signature line, you can do it? The answer, right after the break. Welcome back. If your answer was four, then you are correct. Stick around for a challenge later. Back to you guys. Gatorade. Gatorade. Okay, that's enough. I don't need to hear it again. Yeah, well, you're no fun. I bet the true kind of person you are. Oh, you could, I think you're the kind of person who likes to go to museums. Um, so what's wrong with that? Museums are really cool. You can learn all kinds of interesting things, like about our history, science, nature, which is why Lauren went for this week's Houston Hideout. Hello all, Lauren here with another segment of Austin's Hideouts. We're here at Lucky Lizard's Curios and Gifts and we're going to take a look around and it's also home to Museum of the Weird, so we're going to find out why it has that name. Lucky Lizard's Curios and Gifts can be found on the famous 6th Street and let me tell you, it definitely perpetuates the Austin's Weird theme. I'm here with Steve Boosty, owner of Lucky Lizards, and I'm just going to ask him a couple of questions. Can you please explain how you came across making the Museum of the Weird? Well, that started from, uh, we had several objects in the store that were just strange, and people liked to look at them, but nobody was really buying them. But uh, I, we had this area in the back of the store that wasn't being used, and I figured, well, you know, maybe we can open a little uh, sideshow museum back there and uh, maybe it'll become like a little tourist attraction, get some people into the store. And so we embarked on our adventure through the Museum of the Weird. Oh my god! <laughs> I got this 
these are actually on loan to us. Okay. Uh, we have a couple. Uh, this one is an actual Havara shrunken head. Uh, it's up to your imagination to determine what's real and what's not. Okay. That's cool. Imagination's cool. But let me, let me just clarify. This is a human head. <laughs> possibly. Very, very, quite possibly. <laughs> Out. Well, this has been another segment for Austin's Hideouts. Back to you guys. I always wanted to have a superhero power or just some kind of power. Yeah, well, I hope they don't make you go crazy like in the movie Carrie. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, what are you doing to me, Christine? Oh, stop being a baby. I'm not doing anything to you. Oh, yeah, well, this is getting weird. And speaking of weird powers, uh, Ayla has a review of Pushing Up Daisies. Okay, the best fall, new fall show on TV this year is easily Pushing Daisies on ABC starring Lee Pace. It's a blend of romance, mystery, and fantasy. And Daisies is a totally refreshing addition to the primetime schedule. The main character, Ned, a pie maker, with, has the ability to bring back life with a single touch, but if he touches the reawakened once again, they're dead forever. He only has one minute before another life takes the place of the renewed. The series begins as Ned revives his childhood sweetheart, Charlotte Charles, also known as Chuck, played by Anna Fryle. Ned and Chuck fall back in love, into puppy love. It's a seemingly impossible relationship because of Ned's ability. Tony Award winner Christian Chenoweth plays Ned's lovesick employee, Olive Snook, who sees Chuck as a constant threat. Shy McBride is Detective Emerson Codd, who has gone into the business with Ned. They find unsolved deaths, usually murders, and speak to the victims, and they bring them back because of Ned's powers and solve the case, collect the reward, always with a watchful eye on the clock. The mysteries have become increasingly easier to solve, but the fantastical nature of the show keeps the viewer entranced. Rounding out the regular cast are Tony Award winner Swoozy Kurtz and Tony nominee Ellen Green, known best for her role as Audrey in The Little Shop of Horrors. As Chuck's bird, as Chuck's bird and fine, che uh, fine cheese obsessed Aunt Lily and Vivian, who also formerly comprised the Darling Mermaid Darlings, a synchronized swimming duo. The series is now five episodes in with three more left until the ramifications of the writer's strike begins to sink in, and it already has hit the ground running. Viewers have already been treated to episodes involving crash test dummies, saran wrap kisses, a horse jockey's ghost, carrier pigeons, and windmills, as well as musical numbers, as Chenoweth has already crooned hopelessly devoted to you from Greece and sang with Ellen Green, they might be giants, uh, birdhouse in your soul. Since such a large portion of the cast has a background in theater, showrunner Brian Fuller has deemed a musical episode inevitable, something to look forward to. Pushing Daisies airs Wednesday nights, 7 o'clock on ABC. I think I could be as crazy as Ned is. Yeah, you're definitely not far behind. <laughs> you're being so mean to me tonight. Well, you know, speaking of mean, and flowers for that matter, coming up next is a music video called Evil Bee.
听。That was interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I've never seen bees that way. Uh, so how do you tell the difference between a female and male bee? Um, I think there's only a queen bee, and the rest are males. Mm. But I could be wrong. Well, I uh, really don't feel like getting into deep discussion about this. Uh, but maybe we can ask Will, since he's got trivia for us tonight. I think you're right, Christine. But anyway, hello again. Time for some music trivia. What British band had hits such as Champagne Supernova and Wonderwall and just released a DVD titled Lord Don't Slow Me Down? The answer after the break. Tell me that you know another way. And if you are familiar with the 90s Britpop movement, you would know that the answer was Oasis. Hope this awesome band is not a blur to you. Guys, take it away. You know, sometimes I would rather go to the theater than a movie. Why? You know, I just kind of like the idea of a guy taking me out on a date to the theater instead. Well, okay, I'll admit, theater does have a small place in my heart. See, I knew there was a soft side to you. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's hear about someone else's guilty pleasures now, okay? You know, Eleanor Roosevelt once said, America is all about speed. Hot, nasty, badass speed. And no one would know more than Eleanor Roosevelt, who coincidentally invented cars. And the term badass. And our next two guilty pleasure films. Yep, you heard her right. We've got two guilty pleasure films this week. A double feature of awesomeness centered around our favorite pastime. Reckless driving. Don't you mean race car driving? Mm, we're arguing semantics here, potato, potato. Whatever. Our first film to race in the theaters in the hearts of gearheads slash Tom Cruise fanatics everywhere was the 1990 gem Days of Thunder. After director Tony Scott, yes, the brother of legend Ridley, achieved monumental success with his other Tom Cruise epic, Top Gun, he brought us back to the same heart-pumping plotline, only this time involving race cars. In this movie, Tom Cruise brilliantly portrays the hot-tempered and awkwardly named Cole Trickle. Yeah, Trickle on the back of a race car outfit. Nice. 
Price. It also featured Nicole Kidman as a brain surgeon who also doubles as a wheelchair race referee in a pivotal scene scored by Hans Zimmer, whose fingers deftly race across an 80s synthesizer. With appearances by Robert Duvall, John C. Riley, and most notably Randy Quaid, there is no way this film can disappoint. If you doubt that, just listen to the tagline, you can't stop the thunder. I get chills every time I hear that or when I hear Cole Trickle's reason for living, speed, to be able to control it, to know that I can control something that's out of control. Enough said. <laughs> Speaking of control, or the lack thereof, the tagline of my guilty pleasure serves as a monument to the Generation Y mentality and has recently become my own personal philosophy. If you ain't out of control, you ain't in control. With a tagline like that, you know you're getting a badass movie experience. The movie, obviously, is the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. I suppose the first two films in the Fast and Furious franchise just didn't do it for me. Maybe I just have a soft spot for Asian men. Director Justin Lin, most widely known for his film Better Luck Tomorrow, fires on all cylinders, I'm punny, with Tokyo Drift. In this movie, we get a peek at a new style of racing involving drifting. The film centers around rebellious teen Sean, who, in order to avoid jail time for street racing, moves to Tokyo to live with his father. Not long after his arrival, he discovers the underground Japanese racing scene full of hot chicks in schoolgirl uniforms and tricked out cars, which naturally is right up my alley. Blah, 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 love, conflict re resolution. We won't focus on the plot too much because, well, to be honest, there isn't much of one. But with appearances by Bow Wow himself and various buff Asian dudes, this movie has plenty of eye candy for the ladies. In one tense scene, Sean's friend Han delivers a classic line in response to a movie-shifting decision by Sean, saying simply, What did you expect? You didn't just play with fire. You soaked the matches in gasoline. And that's really what this movie is all about. Danger. Danger and fire, and hot chicks in school uniforms and buff Asian dudes. Clearly, this film is a classic. You know, all this talk about racing cars kind of makes me want to get out there and put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, but don't you drive an, an 87 station wagon? Shut up, Bessie is a speed goddess. Plus, the rims I bought at Target make her a force to be reckoned with. Back to you, crazy hosts. Well, I do always enjoy some sweet action, and Tom Cruise never lets me down. Me too, but my favorite actor in Days of Thunder by far was Robert Duvall. He was Boo Radley. Yeah, well, I am definitely going to rent over Thanksgiving. Maybe to kill a mockingbird too. I'm seriously going to come back from Thanksgiving five pounds heavier. <laughs> and I'm seriously going to come back from Thanksgiving five pounds happier. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just excited. But not excited that our show is winding down. We have one last trailer for you tonight. Soon after I killed myself, I found a job here at Kamikaze Pizza. Who could think of a better punishment, really? Everything's the same here, it's just a little worse. You offed with the guitar? It was wild. Iggy Pop almost came to see that gig. I was missing Desiree. I think it was Desiree's suicide that really hit me. What? She offed herself about a month after you. She's not in the city. Worst case scenario, we just take a ride, right? We? Oui. You got anything better to do? How come? Who the hell likes being stuck in a place where you can't even smile? I just want to go home. I'm not sitting in the bed. What the hell? Morning, boys. Nothing like a good night's sleep, huh? As long as you want it so bad, it's not gonna happen. Just forget about the miracles. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It will. It will. If I'm gonna find the people in charge, I have to keep looking. Yeah, I know. When I'm here with you, I kind of miss myself the way I used to be. What were you like? I was happy. The dog has spoken.
That's all we have tonight. Thanks for joining us. You have a good one. Oh, yeah. I took the train back.